Do you ever wonder, especially these days, where all our great leaders are? I do. And by great, it's relative, but I mean bright, courageous, caring, honest, inspiring, visionary, and wise. That's what a great leader is to me. And yet, we don't seem to have as many as we need. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. Here's a startling fact. According to Gallup polls, only 30% at the most of employees are fully engaged at work. So that means like 70%, maybe even 80% of employees are just bringing their bodies into work, sitting at their desk or what have you, but they're not there. They're not, they're probably just getting by. So just imagine what would it be like if it was the reverse. So 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100% employees are fully engaged in what they're doing in their work. The world would be different. People would be so much more happy and also more productive. And we would just be so innovative. So that's what I'm here to talk about because this is important. You know, it's like, right now, especially with all the great challenges that we have. So I'm gonna share with you three main ways of how to cultivate leaders. Because it, 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 leaders are not born, believe it or not. There's no baby that just comes out of the chute and says, I want, I'm, I'm a leader, <laughs> I, I'm a CEO. <laughs> so leaders are made in many ways. So I'm going to share with you three ways. Because if you think about it, I mean, why don't we have more great leaders? Is it because of lack of resources, do you think? Not enough books out there? <laughs> Not enough uh, seminars? Not enough executive coaches? MBA programs? No, absolutely not. We have an overabundance of resources than we ever did in life right now. So that's why it's really important to say, okay, we have all these resources, but something is not happening. And I really think a lot of that is, you know, it's one thing to know something, but it's another to act. So turning knowledge into action, that's the real hard part for humans, for anything. So the three main ways, first, Leaders need to really lead from inside out. What does that mean? That means we really have to clarify, what is my mission in life? What are my values? What are my guiding principles? When push comes to shove, how do I want to act, <laughs> if at all possible, right? So we need to clarify that. In other words, we need to clarify, why, do, why am I getting into a leadership? And you know what? A lot of people get into it for money, prestige, status, power, fame. And none of those things are wrong. I kind of like them myself. <laughs> but the reality is those are byproducts of becoming a great leader. If that's the source of our motivation as a leader, boy, they're not sustainable. They're not sustainable for you and your employees. I mean, would you feel motivated to go work for a leader who's like, yeah, I'm in it for the money. <laughs> so unless your motivation is something like, you're going to leadership because, not because your boss asked you, because you're an excellent software manager, you, you go into it because you want to evolve as a human being. You want to grow personally and professionally. And also, you want others to do that, and you're gonna help them do that. that. That is so rewarding as a leader, probably the most rewarding. And so, if those, and you wanna serve your company, you wanna serve your organization, you wanna serve the world. Now, if that's your motivation, that's gonna feed your soul. And so, that's why it's so important. And so, we're, you know, 
leading from the inside out is so critical. And so many times we depend on exterior forces to influence us. And that's, that's a really kind of a dangerous thing. Because nowadays especially, it's like the Chinese curse. It's a curse. May you live in an interesting time. <laughs> and we live in a very interesting time, don't you think? <laughs> A lot of things are coming up in my mind right now. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to get the core. Who are you? What are your values? It's not like you're going to stick to your values 100%. It's, you know, it's being human about it. Because there's no perfection. I found that later in life. So anyway, so leading from inside out. The second one is, Leaders really need to approach leadership as a marathon, not a sprint. Now, are any of you marathon runners? See, we have quite a few. Would you ever run a marathon without training at all? <laughs> that would be crazy, right? Because you need stamina, you need persistence, and it's a mental thing, isn't it, more than anything. You have to break through a wall. And so, just like that, we need to make sure that as leaders, we are maintaining our energy at a certain level, that the quality of our energy is really, really good. And so, well, what does that mean? Well, we have to be excellent at energy management. Energy management, because you know what? That's really the only thing we really bring into the world. Okay, we can all develop skills, but ultimately, it's what is the quality of my energy that I'm bringing forth? And so, self-care on a daily basis. Daily basis, whether or not it's physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. And it sounds like, oh yeah, great. Well, I have a busy schedule. Where am I gonna fit this in? You know what? Everybody can do three-minute meditations. That's what I ask my client to do. Just do three minutes. Can you not spare three minutes? Then I think we have a bigger problem. <laughs> I think we need to get a doctor in here. I'm not a doctor. So that's why just self-care, constant self-care. Here's the rub. A lot of leaders are somehow conditioned to think, I think it's our culture, that when you are a leader, you take care of others. That's your job. But taking care of oneself, that seems kind of selfish for some people, for some people. Um, especially women, I might add. You know, there's a gender thing going on there, I've observed in my 60 years. So I'm here to say, taking care of yourself daily, charging up your batteries, maintaining the quality of energy that you bring into the world is the most unselfish thing that you can do. It's the best health care habit you can have. Let's not even go to the hospital. <laughs> so preventative wellness. So that is so important, energy management. So we've got leading from the inside out. We've got marathon, not a sprint, training. And then the third one is what I call leadership flexibility. Now, on one, this is a continuum. This is what I call the yin and yang of leadership. I'm Asian, so I can say these things <laughs> like, and sound wise <laughs> and all-knowing. I really, yeah, and of course I am. And so on one end of the spectrum, we have the soft leadership style. Soft, not wimpy. Big difference. So what does that look like? open, listener, listening much more than talking, being receptive, being flexible, being honest about when you make a mistake and apologizing people and owning your mistakes. Boy, that's, that's just really hard to do for some people, including me. <laughs> and so that's what open leadership looks like. Okay, on the other side, it's firm leadership. So firm looks like this. 
assertive, you confront or manage conflicts directly. I've got an adult to adult. Imagine that. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, when I'm out there, it's like 95% of people, including leaders, do not manage conflict. We never learn how. That's one of the issues. We don't learn that in our families, most of us. Most of us learn how not to do it. So why would we change when we go to work? So, you know, it's not anybody's fault, but my God, if leaders really got a backbone, all of us, and actually managed conflicts directly, the morale would go up. Because people would know, hey, this person's going to take care of business. You know, it's not a matter of having favorites or letting things go by while you're working your butt off. And so that's why the morale would go up. So firm leadership is that. And so counting or holding people accountable. That's the other thing. You gotta hold people accountable. Otherwise, the people who are working hard are like, why am I working so hard? Yeah, so that's why it's, those are the three things, okay? So we have leading from the inside out. We also have marathon training. And then we have the last one, which is style flexibility. Most people just get stuck in one area, you see? And we need to be able to flex. So that's why I think we need great leaders right now. And you know who, my, who I want to be when I grow up? It's Malala Mustafi. Yeah. She started being a leader, an advocate, um, at 11 years old. Can you imagine? I can't tell you what I was doing at 11 years old. OK, so then at 15, she got shot in the head and almost died in a school bus. 17, youngest recipient of Nobel Prize. And at 20, she's going around the world talking about her experience. My gosh, may I grow up like her. Thank you. <laughs>